Welcome back to another video where I'm actually in my room for once again in terrible lighting and in this video I'll be actually modding out my own board for once not a friend's board not switches just in general like a good upgrade um I'll be putting some new keycaps on that kind of like GMK but they're not GMK because I'm too broke for them uh some new stabilizers from Duroc because the OEM ones kind of became trash in my opinion and I'll be putting some Telios which I underpaid for which is very good because I don't have to waste money on Telios. So let's just get started. So to get started back at my workstation, we have my board, of course. The Telios V2, which I underpaid for because my friend was kind of dumb when he was selling it to me. They're stock, by the way, and new. And I have some Duroc plate mount stabilizers that are in white because I thought it would be cool. And also the new keycap set, which is way too big to fit into this picture in frame, so... I'll try that way later. So while I am aggressively pulling off these keycaps, I just want to tell you all to please go subscribe to my channel because I've been struggling to hit 100 because it just goes up and down. At the current moment I'm recording at, I'm stuck at 98. I just keep going up and down. Like I see 100 sometimes and it goes back to like 95 or something. Like, can you all stop messing with me? Just please subscribe. I just want 100, please. Right. Anyways, that's my message. And I am still aggressively pulling off these keycaps, so I'll be back later. So I've taken out all the null key creams, the blank keycaps, and the uh, stock stabilizers. And today in the video, I'll actually take apart my entire board because I just want to redo the screws to make sure everything's tight again. And no unusual sounds from my board. I'll also redo the band-aid mod because I don't think I did a good job last time, so yeah. After rebuilding my board, I'll start moving up the Telios. <laughs> After having disassembled my board completely, by piece by piece, I forgot how cool it was to build this thing. So next step now is to take out my Telios, and you're gonna have to open all of them up. Well, only 61 in general. I have to open up these 61 Telios for the build. So now I have to grab my bowls, and I don't know where my switch opener is, and I found it. So, now to open these glorious switches. Not from glorious, just describing how good, cool and good they are. having opened up all the Telios and finally start lubing so first of all we have to get my stem holder my brush of course uh these are the case I bent some pins because that happens super lube and my cry talk should be somewhere ah here it is and we can get started now and uh I got this thing for my lubing because i still don't want to buy a lubing station i don't know why at this rate um i think lubing 12 at a time would be more efficient than nine at a time so i'll try that if it doesn't work then it doesn't work unfortunately and as usual kind of bag bag, bag lube these springs and it's the first time i've actually worked with uh gold springs before so they look really nice to be honest thanks zeal for adding that little extra tip now, let's grab my super lube oil. And I can just dump in a couple squirts. I do not know how much I added. It, it might have been like 20 drops or something. Hopefully not. Alright, now I'll be back after I can get this oil all over the springs. After having bag lube, this golden springs i think it was from out of real gold or they're just gold plated i can start working on the telios 
And I feel like I should be giving these more respect because they do cost a lot, so. Okay, so first thing I can tell from trying out this lubing station is that they fit in so much better. Holy crap, I should have been using this all this time. Can't believe I've been using the small, tighter one. They just pop in like Legos. It's so easy. And I regret so many life choices now. And one of those life choices is not getting a lubing station. I think that was still a good choice. This is still cheaper and better in my opinion. So now I can start lubing the Tilios. Yay! having lubing all the telios in two hours we can finally move on to the white thorax stabilizers and i'll be using the electric grease on the wires right on the housing and two syringes for wire balancing so i can get them straight out and of course my brush so i'm gonna try my best to lube these stabilizers and hopefully nothing goes wrong darn all oh, right i have to clip them too Dang it. Oh well, I'll do that too now. So while modding out my stabilizers halfway, I realized if, if, if I want to test stabilizers, I have to rebuild my board. So I will proceed to rebuild my board now. However, I want the band-aid mod to play it again, so I'm not sure how this will have to play out. So I'll just start rebuilding my board, I guess. Dang it. After almost two hours of struggling, I put everything back together except for the keycaps, so I redid the band-aid mod. I finished modding up and tuning the stabilizers. I had trouble with the backspace, but I fixed it eventually. They sound decent enough for me. I put back the top plate and fixed all the standoff so it wouldn't rattle as much when I type on it. I, I put back all the telios. I verified that all the switches work for now. But I say for now, I may change them out in the future. In general, it looks pretty nice. Telios are just really nice looking. Now I just need to get my keycaps. So these are the keycaps I chose. They look pretty cheap, and trust me, they don't look cheap when you actually see the actual keycaps themselves. So, first inspections. Yeah, what a great packaging experience. Some color keycaps customization brand, yeah. The bottom is smashed, but I don't want to show it. 
Yeah, thank you, FedEx. I think you delivered this. And there's no tape, because yeah, it just came like that. So upon opening, you can really see how you look now, so. I bought these because they look like GMK, and trust me, this genuinely looks like GMK. And they are a black on white keycap set with Japanese sub legends and PBT, I believe. Uh, they cost 30 bucks only, which is a good deal, in my opinion. A very good deal. So this is the main set in general. Very nice, I guess. And the second portion is like your numeric pad, your arrow keys, other extra keys, different size space bar, different cast lock styles, and this is way other keys. In case of bumps on them, which I dislike, so thank you for considering this random company. And multiple keys for escape, which I will choose on my own later on. This is just okay packaging. And the outs of it, I am missing a key. Like, it just looks like I'm missing a key, but I don't think I need it since I have a 60%, so I don't really care. Anyway, it's time to install them. So after having putting on most of the key casts, it's time for the escape key. So this is the stock escape key, but, you know, that's kind of trash. So, of course, we have the other options. I have this option, which I'm not really a fan of when you think about it, so screw that one. This, this is kind of better, but not my taste. This is just the first one, but vertical now, so no. A lot of these are just random lines, in my opinion, so no thanks either. Okay, so this, I was actually considering, like, it looks pretty nice there, but there, there was one more escape key. After six escape keys now, here's the synth. This looks perfect. And I shall put it on now. And there we go. Now my board looks complete. So just a few things before I start the sound test. I uh, don't mind these pieces of tape sticking out from the bottom of the space bar. I mean, sure, it looks a little awkward, but I don't really mind it. It's just pieces of tape. And second of all, these are chair profile keycaps, not OEM. My blank keycaps, my Corsair keyboard, all those are just OEM. I've never used cherry profile before on some keycaps, so this may be weird to me. And since I have north facing LEDs, I may have some interference issues with the keycaps. So if it sounds weird, I blame it on the keycaps rubbing against each other because of uh, interference. So after that, let's get started.
I'm using my board with the upgraded stabilizer switches and keycaps for about a day now, and I would say it's going fairly well. A few hours after I uh, built the board initially, I had issues with the stabilizers because they didn't sound right to me, so I spent like two hours remodding them heavily. And I think I got the two of them correct now. And to be honest, I think the switches are great. I'm not a fan of clacky or poppy kind of telios. Well, not telios, linear for that matter, but... Telios are known to be on the higher pitch sound noise, medium area. And they're very clacky. But like, for me, the way I have them set up with, you know, an aluminum plate and lubed with Crytox, the clackiness is a very nice sweet spot to the point where I actually kind of enjoy it. And I've been playing with this board a lot on Metrotype. I think my speed is going a little down, like 110 WPM, but I blame on the keycaps, chair profile. I thought it would be the same as OEM profile, but turns out they're not the same, so I actually have to learn how to use chair profile keycaps now. Because they have some kind of more curvature, more than OEM, so it's hard for my fingers to hit the keys. But for the stabilizers, very good in my opinion. The switches, sweet spot of clackiness, and yeah, I just really enjoy this board. And these GMK keycaps look nice, and I would never spend $100 to $300 on pieces of plastic, so this is probably one of the best keycap sets I own and have. I don't even have much in the first place, so yeah. In the end, Telios V2 with GMK and Deluxe Stabilizers on this GK61X. I like it a lot, so. See you guys next video if I can even make a lot of keyboard video. Bye.